It's World Space Week. You might already have seen my film on how far away is extraterrestrial life, but I'm back with another question. How much energy would it take to get me into space? Now, I'd love to go into space, and there's one thing stopping me, gravity. How much gravity? Thanks to Isaac Newton, we can work that out. If we know the mass of the two bodies involved, uh, in this case, me and the Earth, so about 70 kilos and quite a lot more than that, and how far away the two bodies are, or rather the square of how far away they are. So in this case, uh, I'm on the surface of the Earth, about 6,000 kilometres from the centre, so it's the square of 6,000 kilometres. Now, we can think about gravity as a kind of acceleration. If you imagine if I jumped out of a plane, I'd accelerate towards the Earth, unless I was wearing a jetpack that was exerting an equal and opposite force pushing me away from the Earth, another of Newton's laws. So, using that, we can work out the velocity, the speed away from the Earth that I would need to get a certain distance in space. And we can work out that if I travel at 11,184 metres per second, that's enough to take me to infinity. So if I travel slightly faster than that, I can get to infinity and beyond. But I don't want to go to infinity. I'd quite like to go to the moon. How much speed would I need to get me there? Well, this is where, of course, gravity can help, because if I get a certain distance towards the moon, the moon's gravity will actually pull me in. Because the Earth's mass is 81 times that of the moon, it is, in theory, 81 times stronger. But it also depends, remember, on the square of the distance. So if I get nine-tenths of the way towards the moon, then the Earth's gravity has not diminished in strength by a factor of nine, it's a square of 9, so it's a factor of 81. So that's enough to balance the difference in mass between the Earth and the Moon. And if I can get slightly past that point, then the Moon's gravity will actually be stronger, as far as I'm concerned, and pull me in the last bit of the way. So how fast do I need to be going to get just past that point? I need to be travelling at just over 11,168 metres per second. Great, so all we need is a big gun that will fire me at 11,168 metres per second, and I'll go all the way to the Moon. One problem here is the atmosphere. Obviously, if we didn't have an atmosphere, we wouldn't be here making these films and you wouldn't be here watching them. Uh, but it does have some problems because the air resistance will slow me down. I'll need about 10% extra speed, in fact, just to overcome that. And also the friction, uh, because if I was to be launched out of a gun at 11,168 metres per second, the friction just from the air would incinerate me. Even if I was inside a spaceship, the, the heat would be ridiculous. This is why rockets are so great because with a rocket you don't have to start at that speed, you can accelerate towards it. Because a rocket works by another of Newton's rules, if you chuck enough energy out the back in the form of exhaust gases, it will fire you forward at the same speed and then you will keep accelerating. The Saturn V rocket that took Apollo 11 towards the Moon weighed 2,766,913 kilograms at launch. And that is a lot of mass to accelerate to 11,168 metres per second. But most of that weight is fuel. So with every tonne of fuel that I'm burning, not only is it accelerating me in the direction I want to go, but it's also reducing the mass it has to move by a tonne. And this is a continuously changing process, which is why we need Newton's other great invention, calculus. And by using this, we can work out exactly how much fuel we'll need to get the bit that we actually want, the spaceship with me in, out as far as the moon. And there's a lovely equation for that. You take the initial mass, the great hefty rocket full of fuel on the launch pad, you divide it by the final mass, the little bit with me in that's going off into space. You take the logarithm of that, because of the whole calculus business, you multiply it by the effective exhaust velocity, and then that gives you the difference in velocity. So using that and knowing the velocity we're aiming for in the end, 11,168 metres per second, we can work out exactly how much fuel we need to get us from a great heavy rocket on the launch pad to me shooting off towards the moon. So, in short, the answer to how much energy do I need to get into space is, it depends on your rocket. Talking of using up energy, find out what happened when Head Squeeze pushed Greg Foote's body to the max, and how much energy is in an Easter egg. Oh! <laughs>